Hi everyone, I'm Mario, and today we're going to be looking at something that I honestly did not think would actually exist anymore. This is going to be a Warhammer animation, specifically for the Siege of Vrax, or Vrax Chapter 1, by the YouTube channel, also known as Vrax. There's going to be a link below, hit it up. I don't know how long this is going to be online. I just need to check this out right now, because I've heard a lot of good things about this. And I'm just going to jump right in, because I literally don't know how long this is going to be long. I cannot spell this out enough. These kind of animations are a really rare treat right now because most of them get killed. I'm really looking forward to seeing this. So you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up while it's still available. Do that. And let's just jump in to see what's going on. I'm really freaking excited. And we're beginning. Slow fade in. In the Emperor's service, the Death Corps will pay any price. Okay, we're just jumping straight into the Death Corps. I know they're involved in Vrax, but a lot of my knowledge about this is secondhand mentions in other media. I actually haven't really read the Armored Compendium or whatever it was from Forge World where this was created. I don't really know much about it. Chapter 1, Departure. I do know this is, I think, where most of the Death Corps Krieg really became a thing. Ooh. Ooh, okay, right off the bat, a few things I can tell pretty easily. In terms of quality, this is pretty damn high. I like the slow fade and I like the small bits of audio, not so much white noise, but just a drone in the background that you can barely hear. So immediately just gives me that little sense of building tension. That's great. And you can see just right here with the detail on the skulls and the overall shininess of, I'm assuming the back of a Kriegsman. What do you call the individual soldier? I don't actually know. Guardsman? Oh, yeah, cannon fodder. A crease in cannon fodder. Nah, that's a little mean. Let's go with what they actually are. Shovel enthusiast. Yeah, even I know that one. You can see this from the detail here of the shadows that it's actually rather smoothed over. So it's not super high realism detail like the Astartes animations were. But it's incredibly clean, incredibly smooth. I love the lighting down and just how eerie and dark it is. You see... What looks like the weapons on the front and barely even legible. It looks like Latin, so basically high gothic, which is basically Latin. Put right in front of him, barely visible. I actually missed it for quite a bit there. I love it. And just starting with the first full image as the Aquila embosed and really focusing on the one eye visible. Because it's always in the Aquila, but a lot of the times when I see it, it's not really focused on. I just like seeing that as, hey, here's the one eye of the two-headed bird. It's just something you don't usually get to see. Also, I'm a big fan of these slow drawings. Ooh. Oh, now that's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if this detail was intentional or not, but check this out right here. Like right after this, right here. Right when we're focusing on this, and this is the big point we're supposed to focus on, it's the most detailed. But then you look in the corner, and instead of just having perfectly detailed images, there's actually a blur around it. I don't want to say a motion blur, but it's moving so slowly to pull back that it doesn't actually do it. The overall effect, though, is while you're getting a bigger scene, you get to see more of it, you're still focusing on this as the only thing that matters. So check it out. As it gets closer, the blur recedes. This is so cool. Because it's actually forcing your eye exactly where it needs to be. As it pulls out, you see more... A cathedral? Oh. I still cannot read Latin. I have no idea what that says. Oh, it's yeah, it is a cathedral. There's people in there. I didn't realize Creek had churches. Dude, look how many people there are. Oh yeah, it's all Krieg. I'm actually a bit surprised it's that open. Although I guess with how often they're running to the front, they don't take them that much time to pray by comparison. High turnover, I guess you could put it that way. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely see it here. Yeah, it's easier to see in like one of these scenes when the light's shining on him. Like right here, you can see. It's not super high quality renders, but it's really detailed. The motions look right. Just that little, it's not the usual animations people who aren't aware of it do like the up, down, up, down. It's basically the waiting animation for a game. That's what a lot of people do when they walk. This one is more of a side to side, which is actually a nice little detail because when you're really struggling with heavy pack, this is actually a more natural momentum because you're shifting from side to side with your foot. So if that pack's really heavy, he's showing it. He's showing actually two different things here. One, it's a great walking animation because it looks smooth. And I just like the crispness of this. It's, it's a nice style. I like it. But also, just 
the I'm sorry, I'm stuck on the walking animation because it's really just good. Showing that it's heavy, he's burdened by it, but it's not so heavy he can't wear it. Just little details like that because of how he's walking, because of the, the weight on him. See? Just like moving side to side. It's almost a strut. But still purposeful enough that it's something, you know, he has. But that's also a gate you take when you have a hard pack on you. And then they are walking to the background. Oh, it's an elevator! <laughs> oh, god damn, that is clean! Oh, I love this. I love the scale they're putting in here. Like, I know it's a little thing, just... just ooh, got all the red lights, the steam, looks like a decompression. Oh, Krieg is underground, that's why. Are they walking out of Krieg or onto a bat? Or into a hall? Oh, okay. And they were going up, so yeah. I guess they're marshalling at Krieg itself. Oh! oh. <laughs> Sorry. When it comes to sci-fi superstructures, I love that. So just this... I mean, I thought the tanks were cool and pulling back. It's like, oh, there's landing pads and there's a ship. There's multiple ships. There's bigger ships. Are those ships or tanks? I don't even know. And, and, and to be fair, it's 40K. Most of those ships technically would count as tanks. Oh. And there's formations armored and they literally are doing parade letters of an A over here. Just, just nice. They can do that. The ground is barren. You can see all the terrain. And honestly, this is one of the things I was a little curious about because a lot of times when you're doing animations like this, it's definitely a style thing right here. It definitely reminds me more of a slightly more smooth over, slightly more realistic version of the style of animation used in the Clone Wars animations. Specifically the TV show, not the opening, I guess, OVA is what it would be, because they put it out in parts. It reminds me of that, just with a little more smoothness, a little more realism. And I love the background, the detail here. This is what I was actually kind of curious about, because sometimes when you go this level of detail, it's because you're using simpler animations. Here, though, you can see that it's very much not the case. They put a lot of detail in just to this background where there's rocks. And right behind it, yeah, it smooths out, but that's fine, because it's mostly in the distance where it would be blurred. Hypervigilance and hyper detail here would actually detract from just this. Having the outcroppings of rock and then these mega structures that, based on the rounding, are either tanks themselves or other ships, and... There's the fortifications. I'm sorry. This is literally a geek gasm for me right now. I am loving this. <laughs> oh, I thought that was an A, but those are pillars. Oh, Krieg, Segmentum Tempesta. There's a, they're right there. Okay, yeah, those are ships. I recognize the cathedral esque toppings. Dude. Okay, this is impressive. Not just the legions, they have literal legions. But check out the shadows in each one. You can see just because of how the arms are moving that they're actually walking in unison. Normally when you have these kind of formations in almost any animation short of Pixar levels of obsessive compulsive, when you have shadows, they're more or less blurred, the light is a little less harsh, so you don't have to add in that extra detail. Every single person is moving in step, and while you can't see the individual characters because of the angle, you can see it reflected in the shadow, and they put that detail in. Look at that! It's just repeat over and over, but they did it perfectly, and because they're moving in lockstep, that's actually a necessary detail to add. Ooh, those basilisks. They're basilisks! <laughs> I recognize that model! Oh, shit. Oh, God, look at those guns! <laughs> this is one of those weird scenes I just love, because it's all perfectly uniform. You can see it's the reused, the same asset every time, but... Normally, in almost every form of animation, when you have a reused asset, it's a bad thing. Here, though, Krieg is basically not entirely clones, but they're basically mass-produced um, factories of people. I'm hyper-simplifying it here, but not so much that what I said isn't right. So all mass-produced people, all basically doing the same thing, all basically with the same template, all basically with the same gear, well, all with the same gear regardless, in mass legions all holding the lockstep, which is basically the Creek thing. It, it kind of works perfectly here. This is, I just, God damn, man. 
and just showing the sheer scope of it. What you're doing is not so much the animation pulling it up, it's the movement of the camera showing the scope and emphasizing it. Command Squad all look the same, but you can see that they're organizing it. Oh, it bends! I'm sorry, this isn't the computer I love. I just need to catch my breath for a second. <laughs> yes, please. I just, the detail here, you can see the main spire and all of the tracery around it. And then a few other spires just poking through the clouds. I think there might be one there. I'm not entirely sure, but there's definitely the one there. I just, it's a ruined world and you can see that clearly. But then there's also still... The civilization that doesn't look like it's lived in because there's like massive cloud and it's dark around it i don't know if it's coming from there or that's the remnants of one of the spires from when they had their civil war for a very long time i don't know but it's beautiful that they include these details rather than just going a generic clouds are covering so you can't really see details but they put the details in under the clouds so you can see that it is mostly a devastated world but there is inhabitation because i think most of krieg is underground at this point so it's just it's just so cool <laughs> Oh. And then the spaceship taking off. Oh. Space fleet. Also, I just love how we're getting the sense of scale right now. We started with the individual and then to a larger cathedral, to the larger army, to the divisions, to the ships. And then we saw the ship taking off. And then that ship is tiny by comparison to the along with a space fortress and all the other battle barges. If you ever want a sense of scale, this is how you achieve it. You start with something small and relatable and just show as it scales up in comparison to everything. This is perfect. For comparison's sake, in the last, I guess, most recent of the mainline Disney movies, I think it was The Force Reawakened? No, uh, that was the first one. Um, Last Jedi? Yeah, Last Jedi. In the final battle, when you have all the ships all over the place, it's like, these Star Destroyers are new because they're bigger. And you have absolutely no idea what that means because you never really have a comparison sake to the old ones. So there's literally no sense of improvement in scale. Or for comparison sake in a movie that isn't that one, in the first Pacific Rim movie, when you have the final kaiju, and it's like, it's huge! But you can't really tell because there's nothing to compare it to except for the enemies who are already kind of dwarfing the main models in the robots. So it feels like it's huge only to the people saying it's huge because you never really get that sense of scale of it towering over a city. And it wasn't so much bigger than the main robots that it really felt bigger because it was more stretched out. So the scale doesn't work. Here, though, they've established just how large this is by showing this, this little speck here, as a massive, overwhelming presence. And it was huge. And then it is nothing by comparison. <sighs> This is good. This is set up. This is telling a story without a single word, without a single bit of plot, and yet you know what it is. Even if it didn't say Vrax, you know that this is gearing up for a war, which is, I mean, it's the Death Corps creep. That's not saying much. They're always doing that. That's literally their point and existence and literally everything about them. But goddamn, does it show it beautifully. The scale is perfect here in the build-up, and I just, I'm, I, god damn. Oh. That was so cool. Oh. Stars? Oh, it's not ending. I thought that was dust on my screen for a second. Ripped opening. Okay, I, I want to watch that again in slow motion. Like, just... I was wondering what that was. Okay, this. This is a thing of beauty. Because if you don't actually recognize the style of animation, the overall effect would just be a warping of the cloud. Or I guess not the cloud, but the background. Which is pretty cool. And you can see the inner light, which is going up. So it's actually just a bunch of effects put together. But overall, the way they're distorting is actually how light is distorted by a gravitational field. For example, if you were looking at light around a planet... 
or that wasn't taking up the light itself, but it's still passing through, which would really not be the case often. This is how it looked like, because this is how gravity affects light. It spins it around, it distorts it, and you can see it moving around a point. So that's actually a really cool effect showing what it would look like to have a gaping hole in reality. This is... I've seen a lot of different sci-fi mediums depict ripping open holes in reality as a gateway, Stargate, or just portals or holes. This is a literal tear from a 3D object. It's not a gate. It's not a flat 2D surface. It's 3D because it's a hole. It's literally a singular point. You can see it growing as it opens and light is literally warping around and it being displaced. And I love the animation here because it's so goddamn cool. And then you can see where it's no longer being displaced. It's open and you're seeing the otherness. And something that should never exist in space is gas like this, uh, more condensed. In bigger clouds, of course, that's a normal thing. It's actually very common. A nebula are basically that, but way more spread out. This is way too condensed for space. And while it's spreading, it's also still really well contained. And the lightning, oh God, you could just, it feels unnatural and everything got darker as soon as it came up. So it's hyper-focused on here. Oh, I honestly half expected to see faces come out. And then the translations, as they're just becoming visible, getting hit by the lightning. Every single one seems almost completely touched by it, but then they move through it. With that little purple residue in their overall design because of the backlit. God, that is such a good choice. Very Slanesh, though. Granted, just because purple. You can still see how fast they're moving because they have the light streaks behind them. The residue of the thrusters. Like by comparison, it's so much slower because they're basically moving through time and they just sped down because it's fucked up time and warp. Oh, God, man. Oh, God damn. I just need a minute. Like that, that was, I have never watched a video and felt like right afterwards, I just need to lead back and take a cigarette and go, oh, God damn. I, I just. That was so freaking cool. Sorry, I love spaceships. My favorite part about any Star Wars movies was always the space battles. It doesn't matter how bad or good a movie was. If it had a really well done space battle or even just a good-ish space battle, I loved it. It's why my favorite Star Wars was always uh, Return of the Jedi because they had space combat. Yeah, I'm a very simple person. And this literally just scratched the itch and I'm... <laughs> There was just a few seconds of it, but it... As you can see, I rather enjoyed this animation. The pacing was good. It was a slow build-up, and it still feels like it's building. And you just get to see the scale, the scope, the individuals, and it just builds from that small level of an individual person at an altar all the way to an entire army arriving at the planet, which I'm assuming is Vrax. God damn. I don't know if this is going to be the entire style. I don't know if there's going to be a second episode. I don't know what's going to happen. But this is a masterclass in showing the buildup with just tension, with just the audio cues from the music. It wasn't even a hard background. It was just a slowly building tension, just a very small ringing. They just grew. Not even a lot, just it grew. And the scenery and the detail in it, This is basically what every high-end sci-fi anything needs to do to build up the sense of scope involved. This is how you escalate. If you jump in at the end, it's like, oh, hey, ships, cool. But this way, you see what every ship contains, and you build up, and you have that sense of scope. And that is so important when you're dealing with numbers in nearly unfathomable levels. You need to connect to the person, that opening person, doing something as simple as just looking at their gear in front of the altar and then pulling back and seeing. I just, I keep coming back to this as a fixation because I think it's very much justified. This was well done. Oh. And if I'm seeing this much detail already, I know I missed stuff. So if there's anything I missed that's really obvious, let me know if you know what those ships are. Also, let me know because I just really want to know uh, for reasons, mostly because I will get models if they're out there. <sighs> yeah, this was good. So if you haven't already, do me a favor. 
go down there, leave a like, leave comments on the original video. Just let them know this is a thing of beauty because God damn, it was. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully the next one for this really soon. Will it? I don't know. That, I just want more, man. I really want more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.